What's up guys, welcome back to Diving Garage. Today, we're tearing down a 350 small block Chevy. Let's dive in. All right, so here's the story. This is the exact condition I got this engine. All I did was throw it on the stand. Uh, as you can see, it's missing a few things. We'll get there and I'll show you some pictures later on. But uh, this guy had this engine in his dirt track car. And the story he told me was that he was running, he's ripping, he's doing his thing. And uh, all of a sudden, poosh, everything gets dark, engine goes dead. And come to find out, this thing, it's got some damage. Come check it out. All right, so as you can see, there are some things that don't quite belong. Yeah, that isn't supposed to be on the top of the engine. It's supposed to be on the downer part. That's okay. All right, so this looks to me like a power harness goes to the starter. We don't need that. All right, and then we can see some things are missing. And we look say we got this Edelbrock intake and this was just laying here. That's okay, right? Yeah, that, that's fine. And then this is okay too, right? That's, there's nothing, nothing wrong there. But look, here's a hint. So maybe a clue, you can, we can figure this out together. Let's check this out. Look on the bottom of there. How does that even happen? So if you don't know, there's supposed to be a little carbon right there and it's supposed to be like a little nub that contacts the rotor right here, which is also smoked. So I'm kind of wondering if there was an electrical failure that led to a complete engine failure. I don't know, well, let's, let's dig in here and let's find out. Also, if you take a look, these are not stock springs. These are stock style rockers and you got the hold down nut, obviously it's aftermarket intake, but also I came down here to look for the, uh, look for the pad right here. But if you can, if I can get this camera to focus, I think this thing has been decked. So we're, we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna figure it out together. I don't know exactly what happened. We're gonna figure it out. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is probably get the distributor off, put this to the side, and then work on getting the intake off. So let's get this. And this looks perfectly fine. These wires actually look pretty good. So let's just save those. And then let's get this distributor off. No, I don't know. It, it seems like this thing's been built because of the springs and then again, the with the way that the pad looks, but we'll find out when we get closer in. All right, distributor doesn't look. Oh, hey, you know what, look at this. Can you see that? This thing is all bent up. I don't know if that was from transportation or what, but yeah, this thing might actually be good. Yeah. All right, now, let's get the little gasket here. That's fine. So there's a bunch of stuff missing, a bunch of bolts missing. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and get this intake off. Oh, good. These aren't tied at all. That's okay, right? It's okay to run your engine missing bolts in the intake and with it loose. All that does is it lets extra air in, you know, it's for that increased performance. All right, I'm back. The Wi Fi died. Can't be having that. Okay, we got them. Um, we got them all. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. In case you didn't know, there are 12 bolts holding down your intake. Don't miscount them. Don't miss them. Uh, one thing I'm noticing too is that typically the oil pressure port. Is being or oil pressure is being measured right here. There's a port sticking right up. You can run angle off of, and then you can put your sensor in. But if you see, the sensor is actually over here, and I, it'll give you the pressure. But I think what you're going to find is that it's going to register a little higher than it actually is. The same as if you measure pressure here, it's going to measure a little lower than it actually is. So instead of it being a little higher, a little lower, go for the middle. All right, we got medium red out right now. Let's see what we can do here. Let's just get in there. Oh, okay. Nice and easy. Probably didn't even need that. Let's get this thing out of here. Get, get out of here. <laughs> Come take a look. There are things a little out of place here, wouldn't you say? This one is my favorite. Yeah. 
that's probably my favorite one and like missing gone i don't know how that happens and then just chilling you know no big deal um yeah here's another another good looking one you can totally reuse that that's a good one well oh look at this one look how far down that lifter is wow even this one too this is probably about as low as they should go so what i'm going to call right now is that we have some flat tappet lifter wear and potentially some major cam damage and there's just junk all up in here i think this engine's out outside for a little while that's probably a lot of it and if you can see over here too it's got a bunch of the rust on it so that's probably why but yeah this is not what you're looking for maybe this section right here this section is perfect but the rest it's just not gooder oh guys you know what this this is why this engine failed don't use these ever all right, I really was curious to see what was under that intake. Typically, I would have taken the uh, balancer off first to see if we can rotate the engine, but I just, sometimes you just gotta know. All right, so let's pop this thing out of here. All right. So when I ran the casting number on this, it came back to an 80s 350. And you would think, being an 80s, it would have a threaded crank, but it does not. Something is going on here. This, this might be a pretty tricky build. And this is the casting number, by the way. We got a 14010207. You'll run that, it comes back to, I think, an early 80s Corvette. And this is, this is very confusing. Let's go a little deeper. Uh, I'm going to pop this timing cover off, and then we're gonna get a uh, socket on the crank and see if we can rotate it. Ho, 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 our suspicions were correct. Check this out. This is not a stock uh, timing set. Folks, we got a built engine on our hands. Yeah, look at that. We got a, a uh, crank gear with three keyways. And these funky looking bolts I've never seen before in my life. And a double roller. And I think... It's even been clearanced on the top. So this is a true double roller. Wow, this is a nice timing set. That's a keeper. This is not. All right, so let's see if we can spin this engine. What? What? You saw that, right? Did it just fall out? It, it fell out? Our woodruff key, is this like a two-piece woodruff key? What in the world is going on here? Can I, can I just use it once? Can I use it one time? Yep, there we go. Oh, I didn't like that. Oh, I'm turning the whole thing. Oh, hold on, let me, uh, let me put it on the looser, looser version. Go put a lock in there or a bolt or something. Okay, we're back. Let's see. Nope. Oh gosh. That ain't happening. Let's try the other way. Come on. Let's go. That's not the other way. Come on, I'm stinking harbor freight. Let's go. All right. Oh. Oh. Whew. Wow. <laughs> that thing is on there. I don't want to give it too much. I don't want to give it too much now and drop this thing. That would suck. Oh, well, this is going to be a problem. 
This is going to be a problem. I'm wondering if we can't get the engine to rotate because some of the lifters are jammed against the cam. So this might be quite the task to get apart. Let's keep progressing. I'm going to save this because apparently this just jumps out of there. And maybe we move to the top, get the heads off, get a better idea of what we're working with. All right, first thing is rockers. All right, let's check out what push rods remain. And I'll just do these in the order. Oh, this one's dripping water. That's cool. Okay. So these ones, these ones appear to be decent. Yeah, I don't know if you can see there, a little bit of shiny. It's okay. The other side. I mean, a bunch of junk, but I think this motor sat outside, like I said. But I'm seeing some pasty stuff in here. And it makes sense because... <laughs> 99.9% .9 chance these lifters are smoked. Okay. Are these pushing? Yeah, these seem to be pushing studs. But you know what? As I'm looking at this, I think... I can't tell. This one? These ones and beyond look like they're higher. So they might have started pulling out. These ones appear to be shorter, which makes sense. Preston says they're prone to pull out. But uh, these, yeah, these look like they're higher. And they don't look like retrofit screw-in studs. No, these appear to be stock. Okay. All right, let's get this head off. Now, if you haven't noticed, these fasteners are completely MIA. Why? Don't know, but maybe that makes it go faster. I don't know. Okay, nothing appears to be broken. These all look okay. Probably, probably a rebuild kit. Look a little funky. Either way, I'm going to the trash. There we go. All right, looks like it broke free right there. Now let's see if we can't rip this off. So it's this side. There we go. Yep. Oh, geez. Well, this thing really was sitting outside. Wow. There's no way I was going to be able to rotate this by hand. Not a chance. Woo. Okay, let's check out the gasket. Say we got a Fell Pro looking gasket. Recognize this one. Doesn't appear to be damaged. Looks okay. Wow, check that out. Look at this. Yeah, this one's my favorite. There is no way, I think there's something growing in there. There is no way I was gonna be able to rotate this. This is gonna be a challenge to get, get apart. Oh man. Okay, other side. Now this side doesn't have the race weight fasteners. So it's gonna take a little bit longer tell doesn't look like they've been off before obviously the rebuild of course but i don't know here we go oh i'm getting ahead of myself i need to do i need to do the rockers all right i'm getting good Okay, let's see what push rods we can get out of this side. 
So, makes sense. The ones that are in their place still look pretty decent. If you can see that. Look okay. These ones will run. Yeah, these are good parts for sure. Okay, now we can get the head off. All right, no, nothing broken. Uh, really dirty, but nothing broken. What do you think? Same, better, worse. For real, guys, don't use these. Let's see if I can. Oh, there it is. <laughs> that one jumped out of there. Oh, it looks like it took the head gasket with it. That's fine. Okay. Oh, a bunch of muck just came out of there. So this side is uh, maybe more, more awful. Check it out. We'll start from this side. So we have the bonus of this one. Actually looks pretty decent. This one's that top dead center. But, uh-oh. That's not good. That's not good at all. You see where the valve and the piston started touching? Not supposed to touch there. That looks awful. This one's the worst. This is just, it's just bad. Look at that. Okay, well, yeah. All right, so this is the head we just took off. Um, looks okay there, but we see we have some impact there. And less okay, not, not having a good time. And this head gasket stayed. So we can do this with one hand. Yeah, this thing, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look like it's burned up, like it's breached anywhere. I don't think this engine died because of a head gasket failure. So I wasn't really thinking that anyway. And I took another look at these heads and I checked out the casting number. If you can see, let me see, can you see How about that? These are 601 heads. So if you know anything about small block Chevy heads, these are actually 305 heads. So these guys did the old 305 heads on the 350. What does that do for you? Well, it increases your compression. Yeah, but I really think that you lose a bunch of power because you got smaller valves and less airflow, but that's just me. And then this here is the other head. This one is in much worse condition, kind of everywhere, but on this one, I don't think, oh, wait a minute. Does this look a little low? Did we drop a seat? I can't tell. What do you think? I can catch my nail on this one. This one's kind of harder. This one is not so easy. And this one on here I can catch. But then this exhaust is pretty high all the way around. I wonder if we dropped a seat. Hmm. Tough to tell. But again, a 305 head. Take a look at the casting number. Uh, this one's a little tougher to see, but there it is again. We got the 601 head. So I'm actually pretty pumped about that because if these things check out, I can use them on that 283 I tore down. If you haven't watched that one, look for a link somewhere right here. All right, if I'm sweating like a pig, it's because it's really hot in here. I'm not running the fan, so you guys can actually hear me. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over see what the bottom looks like. And I don't know, maybe I can smash these two pistons out and see what condition the cam is in from the bottom. Oh, let's see what's going on here. What? Car quest. Guys, if you're using a race car, don't use a car quest filter. <laughs> Let me see like a, I don't know, a K&N, a Wix. I mean, Still don't run a Fram, that's for sure. But anything else, really, it would have been fine. Um, let me pop that off, just because looking at it, it's gonna bother me. Also, it looks, it looks small. 
the filter on my on my truck engine is like here. Why is this one so short? Unfortunately, I don't have one of those super cool filter cutter openers, but I can see a bunch of muck in there. Not surprising. All right, what else do we see up top? Or I guess on bottom. Um, let's see, what do we got? Holy moly. Well, <laughs> I figured out why everything went quiet on this guy. Come look. Okay, what do we got? Okay. Looking all right, dirty, but okay. Dirty, but okay. Oh, oh, we found it. This is not okay. And then, tell me if I'm crazy, right? Camshaft, no camshaft, camshaft. Tell, am I missing something? Right, you can see all the way through, not all the way through, not not all the way through, not all the way through. Uh, yeah, we need it. We need to finish getting this thing apart. All right, so what to do? We know we have one broken rod. I think that was all I saw. Yeah, one broken rod. I don't think I saw any bent ones. No, I don't think any are bent. None look jammed, and you can tell where that rod was. Hey, the rod cap is, yeah, I, <laughs> guys, I'm not kidding. That cam is broken into three pieces. That wasn't a joke. So there's a front half covering this bear of cylinder, this bank of cylinders, this bank of cylinders. There's zero camshaft here. And on the rear, there's a, a bit more, bit more cam. Now, I'm not sure that's the kind of variable cam timing that, GM was intending here. Okay, curiosity is getting the best of me. I'm gonna pull this timing set and see if we can't get out this chunk of the cam. So, the strategy here is I'm gonna take this sprocket off. This nice set here. Now I'm gonna set it to the side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bolt in a trash one I have so I can pry on it. Also real quick, if you've never seen before, this is a stock timing set. This is a double roller. You can see the difference. This one's much beefier. This is the weirdest fasteners too. You guys ever seen fasteners like this? Really weird. Let's see if we can't get some of this cam. Oh, <laughs> oh, here it is, the big reveal. What? It's broken into four pieces? What? <laughs> what is happening here? What in the world? There's, guys, look at this, look at this. Come in, come look in here. Can you see in there? Look at that. Do you see that piece of cam right there that's turned this way? How does that happen? The cam is supposed to go in this way. But that cam piece is facing this way. No wonder everything went dark. What the heck? All right, I managed to get a couple lifters out. I'm gonna set them to the side for now. And I think maybe I can get this piece of cam out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What the heck? <laughs> How does this happen? Wow. Okay, well, we've been sort of successful so far. I don't know, I guess I'll put that there. Yeah, I think the cam's just gonna have to come out the back. Yeah, and I was kind of hoping to save this block, but it's smoked. There's like a chunk of cylinder missing that like probably about that big on both of these so that's not good Whew. all right i didn't expect that there we go that one came out pretty easy but check this out <laughs> oh man 
This is, woo. Yeah, you can see, look at how much it, I don't know if that was cam beating it up or if it was rod cap, but this thing is destroyed. Oh, gee, it still moves nice, but this thing is absolutely destroyed. This is just done. Can you see? Can you see how nasty that is? I don't know. I can't see. Focus, focus. Let's see, here we go. There we go. Look at that. Oh, geez. That's ridiculous. Now that we know the block is smoked, maybe I can just smash out the rest of these um, pistons. Maybe we try that. Yeah, I think this thing's done for, so what's the harm? Or what does it matter trying to do it nicely? Let's, uh, let's just be mean to it now. There we go. Almost there. There we go, we got one. Woo! Not good, not good. Sheesh, these are, holy moly. These are 60 over pistons. This thing's been worked on a few times, wow. All right, so I have to turn this crank to take this engine apart. So what I'm gonna do is loosen up all the caps, like pretty loose to relieve any sort of tension that's on here. Maybe that'll loosen it up a tiny bit so I can just rotate it maybe a couple degrees. Whew, man. Things are on there. Oh, there we go. Here we go. We got a little bit. Strategy change. Um, what I'm going to try to do now is I'm going to try and see if I can rotate this crank just a little bit and get as many of the rod caps off as possible. I think. I can rotate it, get this rad cap off. These two are already off. This one's off and then rotate some more and get these off. And if I could do that, then I can kind of wiggle the crank out and I'll give you some more room to work with. If you haven't noticed, we abandoned proper engine disassembly a long time ago. So don't watch this thinking that um, I don't know what I'm doing or this is not the proper way because well, yeah, this is not the proper way, but you know what? You're typically not disassembling an engine that blew up the cam into seven pieces. So nothing about this is normal. Oh, geez. This, this nut took a beating. I don't know if that one's gonna come off. Oh man, that, guys, this, this, one, this one might defeat us. I'm gonna try, but it, it might defeat us. Like I said, this block is smoked, so I'm not worried about losing it. I would like to get that cam out, though. Let me check that out. Ooh. Oh, these rods decided to catch back on. Oh! Well, that's one way to get a piston out. Not what I was trying to do. Okay, let's see. How about now? There we go. Got it. Oh man. Okay, so something is up here. That's not a 350 crank. I'm wondering, is that the 283 crank? It's really small. It's really small. That's what she said. All right, maybe now I can fish this camshaft out of here. Maybe, oh, well that's why, I figured out why the cam broke. See right there? So that is one of the cam journals that looks like it ate into the bearing, seized, and then everything just went night night. <laughs> you can get a better look now. Look, so there's one piece of the cam there, a couple pieces there, another piece there. And then that journal, if I can get, like, get, get you in there, right there. Yeah. This thing was, whew. I've never seen a failure like this before. I've seen quite a few different failures. I've never seen a cam journal failure. And look, if you can, maybe you can get you a better look now at the, the condition of all the cylinders. 
it's just it's just too much there's <laughs> look at this one look at that giant chunk that came out oh man and yeah, this one looks okay and then on the bottom you see there both of those cylinders got giant chunks out of them and this thing is just this thing is smoked could it be saved maybe could it be saved by me nah all right here's one final look at everything we were able to extract uh various caps i was gonna keep some of this together to see what the failure was but it was obvious it was that cam and it ate a rod a couple of these pistons came out nothing real here is salvageable this engine 60 over anyway mains mains are what they are um this crank i'm gonna do some investigating on but i it, that is not a 350 crank it's small uh, and i know those are 305 heads so maybe that's a 305 crank maybe maybe they had a 305 and a 350 and between the two of them they made one engine i don't know anyway one last look at what's going on over here this thing is just it's done for lived its life that's the worst of the damage right there and then of course the piece of cam that will forever remain in this block yeah this thing is done i had plans to rebuild it but i don't think i'm gonna do that anymore yeah because it's gonna need i don't know it's gonna need sleeves minimum it's already 60 over and i think you can go 90 over on these but i don't I don't really need to do all that. Oh, well. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this teardown. The mystery was the cam failed. And I think what happened was the, the cam gear that mates to the uh, distributor, maybe it jumped, maybe something happened, and that snapped off that carbon. That's why the cap had that messed up piece. And the cam exploded into 17 pieces and everything just got jammed up. Let me show you the cam real quick. These are all the pieces of the cam I was able to recover. Yeah, you can, I mean, that'll do it, you know? If anything's gonna do, kill your engine, that'll do it right there. All right, all that's it for this teardown. If you liked the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, get out there, dive in your next project. Catch you next time. All right, y'all, check down in the description for low. For low? Come, in, come look in here, can you see in there? Look at that. What the heck? Oh, here it is, the big reveal. What?